What a powerful uh, speech to follow. It's very interesting because, you know, I basically uh, teach the tools of storytelling. And as we all know, those tools have changed over the last few years, haven't they? It's more like story sharing. And um, <clears throat> what the main tool that I use in terms of getting people connected and understanding this quantum leap, actually, in storytelling is the idea of a theme. I have uh, my um, teacher, David Howard, said to me once, he said, Mary Lee, you know, actually, there's only one theme in all stories. Can you guess what that theme is? Of course, right? <laughs> having it, not having it, you know, addiction to it, all of that. So it's very, very, you know, it's very, very hard to come from that wonderful speech. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, so theme is the most important thing when it comes to the new kinds of storytelling that uh, we're faced with these days. And, you know, I work with uh, advertising, I work with marketing. I tend to think that, um, you know, it's so funny, somebody asked me, he said like, you know, Mary Lee, do we need advertising? And I'm like, well, you know, after you eat, you know, and after you have shelter, you go out and you advertise, right? You're like, I'm here. That's advertising. So anyway, I want to um, basically share two pictures with you. This is a picture of me and I'm four years old. As you can see, there's a birthday cake here. And this is, this is a, a backdrop, and it's a little bit shabby. I mean, the picture is shabby. But um, it's, in it's 1962. And this is the um, colored part of the beach in Richmond, Virginia. Now, <clears throat> at the time that this was taken, we had a situation in the States where it was a apartheid type situation where we would have to sit in the back of the bus and things like that. But you know, kids, they kind of don't think about those things. They always think they're kind of rich and things are right. But if you look very close in this picture, I have some tears in my eyes and I'm kind of reaching out. And that is because one of the themes in my life has always been that I want to belong. I want to fit in. Now you might ask yourself then, Mary Lee, if you want to fit in, why are you in maybe one of the least fitting in places in the world where there are people who are tall and blonde. Um, but I think that that is, um, you know, I think that sometimes you just are looking for a place that people will accept you. So a few years after this picture was taken, um, when I was 11 years old, I started to work with uh, computers. And at that time, computers were huge. Uh, there were Fortran, mathematical languages. You had to actually write equations and then wait for days for your, your uh, feedback. Well, I was a precocious child, and so I was like, oh, you know, I want to go there because I, I really feel like this is something for me. And also, there was a very cute guy who was a surfer dude, okay? He was a surfer, and I'd never seen anyone like that <clears throat> in our neighborhood, which was quite poor. And so I was thinking that, well, maybe if I'm a, I could learn something from this guy, I could be a bit uncomfortable, but he could help me reach out. Well, I learned from him how to interrupt somebody else's feedback after they had put all the equations together and put it in on, on these little cards. When they got their feedback, they get a message from me, and they could be anywhere. They could be in another state, they could be in another city, but it was not in Richmond, Virginia. And I couldn't choose who that person was. Now, this is 11 years old. And so, of course, what is the message that I send to this uh, person I don't know? Can you imagine? I love you. <laughs> 11 years old. And of course, then I asked, do you love me? And then actually I heard back from this person that had like a little co correspondence by mail for years because he was a college guy. And it never dawned on me that college people can drive cars. So I thought that he thought I was a really beautiful older woman, right? Um, but um, he obviously came by and saw that I was a little black girl living in Richmond, Virginia. Now, there was one other person in my life. Um, when I also teach storytelling, you have a theme, and of course you have a story. And a story is an emotional journey. 
And then emotion, which we're going to work with a little bit today, is someone wants something badly. Wants something really badly and is having a hard time getting it. Here's the other person in our story. I'd like for you to meet my mother. Now, my mother, as you can see, she was living, we were living on a farm, I know it doesn't look like it, and she was actually picking cotton. And I don't know if you noticed her hands, uh, they are colored obviously with some nail polish, and um, she obviously has lipstick on. This was the weekend. During the week she would pick cotton, I don't know what you, you, you guys know what cotton does to your fingers? They make them bleed. And every weekend she would polish her nails, right? And then she had been a chorus line dancer. So there was always a party in our house and my mother would dance. Now, of course, we had to dance too. And I don't know if you can see that I wasn't quite as you know, glamorous as my mother. As a matter of fact, as time went on, I made a statement about not being as glamorous as my mother. I refused to wear makeup. I, wore, I wanted to be a hippie, you know, I wore the same jeans like for weeks and weeks. And this, this uh, little gap grew and grew. So by the time I went to college, I was definitely alternative. I like to call myself an art chick. But my mother, she made us dance. We were three little girls, and the first thing we had to do, we had to dance so that people kind of liked us, right? Kind of entertainment. So that's a little bit, the storytelling, interactive storytelling, the ping pong effect, effect. You do something and you get, a, you get a response, right? Maybe the person wants to do it back to you, but maybe they don't do it, but you can feel it. Now this is where we are beginning to arc these days. The first kind of storytelling that's the most popular and it's definitely emotionally driven, which most people forget when they're out there communicating, which is the most natural thing to do. It's not digital, it's just human. And that is, I do a move. Now I'm gonna show you one of the moves that my mother made me do. And I had to do this for hours to entertain people. And you, can, you will see why I didn't really like her. This is my mother's um, favorite uh, artist, recording artist, and this move is called the turtle. Now, you can, if you feel like maybe you can do it a little bit, please join. But just see what you feel when I do this move. For hours and hours and hours, and the people give you money, like, oh good. Right? Can you feel it right here, right? Now, you feel, as soon as I start moving, you get an emotion, right? And you're giving me something back and I'm feeling it. Now granted, if someone was on stage with me, they would also feel this. So we'll do a little bit more, right? The turtle, interactive storytelling. Now I can build this with you, but it's kind of limited. It's more like a thesis. I give it to you, you give it back to me, right? A feeling. Now, the next kind of storytelling is social. Now my mother, she made us <laughs> do this very strange thing. Not only did we have to dance and do the turtle, we had to make it our own, right? We had to make it something that showed a part of our personality so that the person who was dancing with us would go like, who are you? As a matter of fact, my mother never ever introduced herself and said, hello, I'm Christine. She always said, who are you? All right? That was her, that was not me. So then the turtle, as you know, turned into something like this, right? Michael Jackson. And my favorite step was this one, right? Up and down, up and down, and do these things like this. Now. If you look at this move, how many people are doing this move these, today? Every single rock, I mean, Justin Timberlake, every single street group, everyone. It's a, it's, it, and it says something about those people when they do it. And of course, there are all sorts of samples from Michael Jackson. 
This is social, right? Now, if I could do it really well, you're going like, why is she doing it like that? And not like this, right? This is, who are you? Social storytelling, part of the art, but still, we have a problem because still, it's pretty finite. You're asking, who are you? Who are you? What is your history? Why are you, why are you dancing like this? Why are you acting that way? And we get some energy going, and this is the internet. When I, when, I did, when I actually tried to work with Facebook, I put up two different groups. One was the Alliance of Storytelling, and the other one was Presenting Mary Lee Chanel. Guess which one I got like 300 hits on in a day? Presenting Mary Lee Chanel. Who are you, right? Who are you? Now, there's another form of storytelling that makes this theme, this arc, and that is progressive. And for that, I need to tell you one other story about my mother, because as you can imagine, this chasm that, went, that developed between us became really brutal. I went all the way to, from Virginia to uh, Massachusetts to go to college. And, um, and I was like, oh great, finally I'm away from this woman. And she always wore very, very short dresses. And usually they were electric blue or pink or something. And I was like, oh my God, I, I really, I'm so glad to be away from her, the hippie person that I am. So I get a call from her when I'm in, in Boston. She says, Mary Lee, I'm coming to visit you for Parents' Day. I'm like, no, Parents' Day? My teachers, my friends, all my cool friends are gonna see this woman, right? And I'm a hippie chip, chick. I'm, a, you know, I'm like the coolest girl. So my mother shows up. She walks in, meets all of my teachers, and who are you? And I'm like, oh my God, this day will be over, this day will be over. So the day goes on, she meets everyone, everything she's really interesting, right? I'm like, oh God, let, just get, let me get to the dormitory room. I get to the dorm room, and she says, she looks out the window, she goes like, there is a dance contest next door, we have to go. And I'm like, no, I don't have anything to wear. And she says, oh, you can wear one of mine. And so there I was having to wear one of her outfits. We go next door and it's just a bar, really. She walks up to the manager and who are you? And I hide, I hide because I think, all right, this night will be over. No one will see me. But of course, her favorite song comes on and it's Watch Me, right? And I'm thinking, oh no, she's gonna dance. She can't find me, so she grabs only the cutest guy in my dormitory, and she starts dancing with him. And I'm just, I mean, I'm falling apart. But what, something happens, she starts dancing with him, and I see her lift, feeling out of him, as she's doing her back bends and her turtles and all her wild moves, and he starts dancing with her, and he starts really feeling, and the whole room feels it. Now this is a woman, who has lived a life of co picking cotton. She's been pretty much mobbed by all white people and they're only white people in the room. And she's brought that room together. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, I'm the one who's always wanted to belong. I'm the one who's always gone out, reaching out to people digitally any way I can. And suddenly I saw someone who was doing it with ease and also with so much grace and I had missed the whole thing. Now, there's one thing that you should remember, and that is that right now there's something in the States that's happened in the last few months this year, and that is that we now have the first African-American president. And his, the arc of his story goes all the way to, I mean, the beginning, I mean, slavery and, and, and forward. He's managed to do interactive communication, social communication, and this progressive education with the entire world. And the, most, and the coolest thing that I saw happen was that the night of his inauguration, did you notice he danced? What kind of dance did he do? He did, have you ever seen any other American president do the bump? <laughs> I mean, he actually touched his butt to another person. And I was like, he did the bump. So I'm thinking that this particular campaign is the most important thing that's happened in terms of communication right now for the world, actually. And an arc that's bigger than anything, and I think that as people, 
if we arc out our stories, if we make our stories really big, if we become these big people that we actually are, you know, then we can really have progressive storytelling. We can use all those things that we are in the most human way, which is the most true, the truest way. So I go around and I teach this that my mother taught me. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.